You know, one of the primary things that we do as leaders, essentially, is to develop other leaders. It's to put them in a position to grow and to lead out. To put them in a position to be developed and then to make their mark. And so I remember working for a church years ago, and the, the, uh, we were sitting in a staff meeting one day, and there was sort of this um, almost frustration because we had had another staff member had been hired by another church to launch, to establish a church, and all of that. And I remember raising my hand in the, in the meeting and saying, Pastor, I think, I think it's a good thing that we're raising up leaders that are helping to build more leaders. I think it's a good thing that we're launching. I think it's a good thing that people are asking us, hey, who do you have? I said, I, I, think, that's, I think that's what Jesus would want, wouldn't he? For us to raise up disciples, to send out, to raise up other disciples. I'm like, if we're holding on to all the same people all the time, that's not a problem. God may call them there. But let's be about raising people up so God will send them out. Amen? That's the same thing in our lives. It's the same thing in our families. The same thing in our businesses. It's the same thing in our organizations, our schools, our, our, our medical facilities, wherever it is. It's the same thing. Man, our heart should be, man, I, I want to I raise people up and send them out wherever God calls them to. Tonight, we're talking about developing others, and uh, the first thing is developing is a journey. Development is a journey, and we're going to pack our bag tonight. How about that? We're going to pack our bag, and we're going to go on a train ride. I'm not a big fan of planes, so we're going to take a train. Y'all with me? We're going we're gonna to take a train, and we're going to pack our bags, and the question tonight is simply this. What do we pack in our bags? What should we be packing? If we're developing other people, if we're helping to develop other people, what should we pack in the bag? What should we have and what should they have on this journey? So let's say we've gotten to the airport or the train station and we're sitting there and we're thinking, hmm, what's in my bag? What do I have on this journey and what have I asked them to put in their bag? on this journey. They're, we're traveling together. Put yourself in the shoes of a leader who has invited somebody on this train, and let's talk about it. So I'm going to ask you, what should we pack in the bag? If this is a journey, let's say months, years of developing, building relationship with this person. What kind of things are you putting in the bag as a developer? What matters to you? And I'd love to open the floor and hear anybody's thoughts. Wyman. Time. Oh, sorry. Say it one more time. Time and commitment. Time and commitment. When you say time and commitment, what do you mean? Anytime you are developing someone, it's going to require t your time and your attention. Good. Uh, and to be invested in that person to be able to do so. And it's not necessarily a single point in time, but as you were saying, it's much more of a journey. So even to this day, even though I'm retired from my previous job and team, when I come across great books that you've selected here for our course, I will go online and order them on Amazon and send it to them so that I can share what we've learned here with them and to reaffirm and confirm that everything that I've tried to teach them is is the right way and the standard as we talked about last week of how leadership should be and that they should continue that journey very similar to coaching trees yeah. in professional sports like football uh, I think there's a lot being talked about now as we, we go through that coaching cycle here mm -hmm. and and where folks have uh, disseminated from so that's how I think about it love that love that time and commitment right actually pastor I've done a train uh, trip it was wonderful have you it was wonderful and now knowing what I know whether I'm going for with myself or family or friends or even staff or a group I would tell them bring some snacks yeah even though you do have the train where you can go and eat but sometimes you want some snacks in between. Uh, bring your cell phone because sometimes when you're 
the sites you want to videotape. That's right. Because they're just beauty, beautiful sites along the way. Uh, bring your Bible because you always, to me, I, take, I travel with my Bible anyway. So because sometimes you want to just have some quiet time to yeah. go and read. Even if you're with your team or what have you, you can always encourage them with the word, whether mm -hmm. they are saved or unsaved. It really doesn't matter. Right. You're just giving the word because that's what we have to do. Uh, everybody doesn't have to receive it, but it's our job to give it. Uh, and then a notepad, because uh, sometimes when you're when you're out there, you're just seeing things and things are coming to you. So almost like the journal, you want to just make notes. Uh, that was the things I did, and Good. have a camera. Have a camera because sometimes you want to take pictures, not on your cell phone. Yep. Use up all your stuff, and then last, some books. Last thing. Go ahead. Some books. Some good books. To books. Read. Yeah. I like it. I like it. What's the best book? I can't think right now. <laughs> Put you on the spot. The Bible. I'll take the oh, Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I got you. I got you. I know that. Barbara, go ahead. Uh, I'm packing generosity, and what I mean by that is guidance and support. Yes. And so I, I want to be a standard, and, and I want uh, those that I'm journeying with to um, know that I'm open to guiding and helping and supporting along the way. Love that. Love that. Listen, one of, one of the things that we talk about um, in the leadership program is generational leadership. And one of the buzzwords that uh, especially Gen, uh, millennials and Gen Zs talk about is community. When you hear millennials and Gen Zs talk about community, and some of us in here are millennials and Gen Z, when they, when they use the word community, they're not just talking about hanging out. One thing I learned working with teenagers and, and college students is that when they mean community, they don't mean pizza parties and ping pong tables. They literally mean guidance. They're looking for life guidance. And so uh, I love that you said that because guidance is so important for, especially, especially in life when we're trying to figure out where we're going and what God's doing with us, guidance can be so helpful. And generosity, I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody else, what are we packing? What are we packing on the journey? Joey, what are we packing on the journey? Well, just to add to the Bible, she said the Bible, mm -hmm. for us, and she taught me this, is to have a separate little pouch for everything you use for your devotions whether where you're at, you know, whether for us music, uh, whatever book I'm studying at the time, you know, whatever I do for my morning hour with God, take that, make yeah. that a priority. I love that. You know what I hear? You know what I hear? Brad, right behind you, right behind you over here. Um, you know what I hear, Dr. Dokes? I hear snacks. I hear journal. I hear Bible. I hear commitment, I hear generosity, I hear guidance. You know what I hear in that? I hear growth. It seems like we're all packing things that are dedicated to us growing. Development is so important because development comes when a tree is watered, right? Growth comes, there's pruning, there's watering, there's growth, there's soil, there's all of those things. And they all contribute to growth. And I think the development is not just, here's what I would say, the development, and I, I think the conversation when you talk as a, as a leader to somebody who's growing is the development or the growth isn't just from the mentor to the mentee. Both have to be dedicated to growing. Leaders continue to be leaders because they grow. And up-and-coming developmental leaders continue to, to lead or to start to lead because they're growing as well. Love that. Yes? I would say add to that patience and humility uh, because things are never going to go as you planned. And um, about your growth, um, humility, because no matter how much you know or you think you know, there's always more to learn. I love that. Would you come up here real quick? Yes, come on up. And Brad, come with her. Come on up. Come up. Yes, yes, ma'am. Um, I was going to say some of the things I would pack are not necessarily tangible, but I would take understanding, commitment, consistency, a willingness to serve. Yes. And no judgment. Very good. Very good. 
It's easy. Would y'all have a seat for me? Thank you. Yes, I like that you said consistency. I like that you said no judgment because, you know, it's, it's easy sometimes. I, I have fallen prey to this in life and in leadership is I expect the people around me to have experience or know what I know. And so I get impatient and start to judge their growth based on what I think they should know. And, and it's easy to become judgmental because we assume that they have the same experiences or have the same knowledge. They may have more knowledge, but in a different area. So if I become judgy, I don't learn from them either. And I think growth goes both ways. I love that. Item number one that we're going to talk about tonight. Item number one in the book is be secure. Be secure. You talked about humility. And I wanted you to, to share a little bit. Brad, I want to ask you this. Being secure. Security is essential. Um, being secure is essential when developing others and walking in leadership. To be um, secure in yourself, in your own giftings, your own callings. And I want to specifically talk about one area, and that is giving the credit away. What has it been like for you in developing people all your whole life? You've been a part of things that have been, you've been growing, other people have been growing, you've been helping to develop and manage and direct. Why is it so important for us to have a secure uh, mindset to be secure in ourselves when we're helping to develop other people. Thank you for the question. I've had the, the pleasure and opportunity, as you say, Pastor Jeremy, with young people and business people and, and young adults and athletes. But I think that the other thing they have in common is one of the things when you're talking about being secure is you have to believe in yourself. Right. And you have to know that what you're saying, it, and they have to learn that you're not teaching or asking them to do anything that you haven't already done That's good. or know how to do. The second thing is, real quick, I would say is the other big thing is believing in yourself and having that faith. Learn how to listen, not hear. You want to, you know, people will talk to you, not only what they're saying, but their body language. That's good. Uh, built a lot of successful sales teams in helping them. So I think being secure is knowing what you're doing is going to work, knowing that you can help people, um, and, and just having that self-confidence that you're not going to ask them to do anything that you haven't done yourself. I love that. What does it mean to walk in humility? And this is one of the questions we actually got. We, we reached out to, um, to our email database and asked people to send us questions for their, the leadership program in 2024. And one of the questions we got was, I would love to know the marriage between leadership and humility according to Jesus. And I love that question. So my question to you is this. To be secure gives us the foundation to be humble. But why is it so important to be humble if we're going to develop other people? Um, I would speak from the perspective of um, leading a lot of young people in an educational setting. Yeah. Um, so a lot of times, um, I would say at least when I was first, um, you know, a teacher, um, I would, you know, teach something and, you know, you expect your students to come with the, um, what do you call it, with the foundational skills. And then you may sometimes realize that they don't have the foundational skills or they have the foundational skills, but the lesson or you know whatever it is that you were teaching them didn't quite go that way well you would hear a lot of people say well you know i taught it i don't know why they didn't get it you know they must be something must be wrong with them but then you have to ask the question well what's wrong with you because if you're grading yourself on what they should have learned um yes they get the grade for learning it but if mo majority of your class is not mastering that then something is wrong with the teaching. So you have to be humble to go back and look and say, okay, well, what is it that they didn't get and why didn't they, di why didn't they get it? And so even when you're you know, assigning grades and, and giving a person you know, a pass or a fail, yeah. am I so perfect in my teaching that you know, they should have this, they should, you know, they should achieve this uh, particular score? Yeah. Is it that rigid? Or if they're right on the edge, 
could I have communicated a little better? You know, could I have, um, you know, explained that a different way? Could I have given them multiple ways to, to attain that knowledge? I love that. Can y'all give him a hand? Thank you. Y'all get out of seat. Uh, y'all are welcome to have a seat. I was going to say, um, what you talked about there was responsibility. One of the big words that we're talking about in these chapters is taking responsibility. One of the things, uh, you hear this a lot in leadership, um, mature leadership is taking the responsibility when things go wrong and giving away the credit when things go right. When you win, it's all about the team, and it's true. And as she was saying, when you have to learn and you have to change and you have to adapt and you have to grow, you take the responsibility as the leader. And I love that. One of the ways that we are secure is in giving the credit away. And this is something that Jesus did. This is really, really, really powerful. This is something Jesus did. Jesus gave the credit away. He took responsibility to, to oversee the mission that God had given him, but he, he gave the credit away, and here's how he gave the credit away. Dr. Dokes, could you come up here real quick, and Brad, come up here real quick, and Joey, if you don't mind coming up here real quick. This is the way Jesus gave the credit away. Whenever, they would, whenever the people would applaud Jesus, if you all would come right up here in front of the camera and stand almost like in a triangle, the three of you together, And this is, um, yep, that's perfect. Okay, now, now if you would point at one another. There you go. Okay. Now, Joey's going to play Jesus. You're going to be God. You're going to be the Holy Spirit. Okay? This is the Trinity. This is the picture of the Trinity. And this is C.S. Lewis, the great Christian thinker, philosopher, and apologist in the mid-20th century. He had something that he called the Great Dance. This is a picture of the Trinity. Father, Son, Spirit. And they are in a great dance together. You know, a lot of times when, when God is pictured in the Bible, well, I wouldn't say, when, when God is interpreted from the Bible, sometimes people make it seem like God is this big guy up here and there's like little Jesus and little Holy Spirit on up here. And, you know, they're like, he, he's like, I'm the man. And they're like, yeah, he's the man. You know, that's actually not how the Trinity functions in their roles. They are actually equal, all equally God, the three persons of the Trinity, and they're all pointing at the other two. So if you pray, talk to, or honor God the Father, God goes, hey, but the Son and the Spirit, look what they're doing. If you honor Jesus, he goes, hey, but look what the Holy Spirit's, look what God is doing. And if you look at the Holy Spirit, he goes, oh, but the Father and the Son, man, look what they're doing. They always honor one another. They're giving the credit away in a perfect community of love. That's what love does. It honors other people by giving the dignity to them by saying, look at what they're doing. They're doing a great job. Cool. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Jesus would do this. Jesus would give the credit away. Um, in John chapter 5, Verse 19, Jesus said this, verily, very truly. Um, it, by the way, anytime you see verily, verily, or very truly, or truly, truly, or any words that are repeated in either the Hebrew or the Greek in the Bible, that is a demonstrative voice coming out. The, the author intends for you to understand this is like he's driving the point home. Very truly. Truly, truly is actually the, the uh, Aramaic or the Greek. Truly, truly, I tell you. The son can do nothing by himself. This is Jesus speaking. He can only do what he sees his father doing because whatever the father does, the son also does. He's like, look, my father's working, man. They're honoring Jesus and Jesus goes, but look what the father's doing. And when I send the spirit, this is what he's gonna do. So when we give the credit away, here's why this is important. Because in developing other people, in developing other people, it is a journey in which the teacher is willing to be passed up by the pupil. Real, true, humble leadership is, is the desire or the willingness for us to go, if I pour myself into somebody, not a carbon copy, by the way, not a carbon copy. 
We want them to be their own person. We'll talk about that in a minute. Not a carbon copy, but we want them to grow and develop. The risk is they might be better than you. We have to be humble enough to say, I'm all for it. My children, I hope they stand on my shoulders and tear our shoulders and go farther than we've ever gone. That's my prayer. And so we have to be secure as leaders to say, yes, this person might pass us up. But Jesus gave the credit away. We can give the credit away. Amen? Always, always, always. Here's a good question. I love this question. If you could change the world, but never get the credit for it, would you still do it? If you could change the world, but never, ever get one ounce of credit, would you be willing? Would you be willing? Love that question. The great dance. We give the credit away. And this is, this is what I love about Jesus. Jesus' heart was this, John 14, 12. Jesus said this. He said, very truly, again, that phrase, truly, truly. He's like, this is the truth, truth. I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing, and they will do even greater things because I am going to the Father. Jesus not only honored God in John 5 and John 6, he said, I am at work because my Father is at work first. Look at what he's doing. And I'm joining in. And then he says to the disciples in John 14, he says, greater things will you do. Because I'm going to hand the kingdom to you. And I'm going to go sit at his right hand. So Jesus was constantly saying, you know what? I want to see what the father's doing because he's the one I want you to focus on. And then the spirit, he said in John 14, 26, he said, the Holy Spirit will remind you of everything I said. And then he will lead you into all truth. John 16, 13. He will lead you into all truth. And when I go away, you will do even greater things. So Jesus was secure in the fact that he was looking. He was looking to give the kingdom away for us to do even more. Amen? He was looking for it. Item number two, make it personal. Make it personal. Make it personal. Dr. Dukes, if you don't mind coming up real quick. Make it personal make it personal would you join me all right we're talking about building relationship building relationship making it personal and my yes please do and my question is just simply this my question is simply this in your leadership how do you make it personal? How have you individually, how have you in your own experience, in your own desire to connect with people, what do you do? Share similar stories. Share similar stories. And, you know, anytime someone's talking about something and I think of, I went through that same experience or I know of someone who went through that experience, but relating to them, and in instances where I may not have any exposure or experience with what they're talking about, empathizing and asking questions and being curious um, and acknowledging whatever they're feeling. Love that. Love that. I love that you said the personal experience. I love that you said the connection there. Because all of us as human beings at, at certain levels, we all have the same experiences, don't we? Mm -hmm. We all have these, these moments in life where we're trying, to we're trying to figure out who we are. We're trying to figure out who God's made us to be. We're trying to figure out where he's taking us. We all have those same questions. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Dokes, um, how do you connect with people? in a way that you can build relationship. If you're gonna pour into somebody, it doesn't matter if it's a family member, a friend, a colleague, a student, somebody that you care for and wanna pour into. How do you build that relationship? Yeah, great question. 
one of the first things that I do is I check in with the individual, right? Or if it's a couple, you check in with them and you want to know, how are you? Well, you know, the job is good. No, no. How are you? Oh, right. Because many times we don't ask that question of individuals because they are passively going through life because it's required of them. They have light bills, they have phone bills, they have the relationship. So they passively go through life and nobody really checks in very deeply with them to say, no, 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 no. I see you. How are you? Right. And when you do that, the person opens themselves up and then the cup that they have that's not full, they allow you to pour into that cup because you have tapped into it by saying, how are you? Opposed to just pouring in. It's like a, a leader coming to your office and say, I want you to do this, 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 and this, and I need it by this time. And they leave, you go, <laughs> right? Because they didn't check in with you. They don't realize that you had a flat tire on your way to work and you were frustrated because of X, Y, and Z. They didn't check in with that. Yeah. They just said, give me these things. Uh, and then, you know, they will be satisfied by you doing that. But what about your satisfaction? So one of the things that I do is always check in with people first before trying to pour anything into them. Um, what does listening, let me ask you this question. What does listening do for you when somebody, a friend, a colleague, a family member, when somebody sits and listens to you, what does it do to your heart? Oh, it makes it full. Um, to know that they are recognizing or taking the time to understand what I'm going through. Yeah. So listening, not hearing, <laughs> the listening part. Uh, there's a lot in leadership. I've, I've done a lot of leadership courses and and we've been talking about leadership at work. And this listening to understand keeps coming up that someone would take the time to understand me and what I'm going through. And it's more than, and it's, it, it's also the uh, physical cues that they are listening and the eye contact and the asking the qu deeper questions. And how did you feel about that? And I had that situation too. Yeah. The listening is a lot. I was going to say it's everything, but it's not everything, but it is very important. I love that. You know, Proverbs 3, 19 and 20, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 19 and 20 says that God built the foundations of the world through wisdom and knowledge and understanding. And understanding, really a big part of that is applied knowledge. The only way you know is if you listen, mm -hmm. yeah. is if you hear somebody out. I love that. Y'all give them a hand. Thank you. I think making it personal, you know, there's a story in first Samuel chapter 17 verses 38 through 40, where David is going to fight Goliath. Uh, whether you've been in church or not in your life, most human beings know this story. David's going to go fight Goliath. And Saul tells him, put on my armor. And David goes, I don't, Okay, fine. So he puts it on. It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. So David goes, I'm going to take this off. This isn't me. This is not how I roll. And David says, this is not my calling. And I think one of the great ways as we listen in developing people is we're listening for what kind of armor should they be wearing? What kind, of, what kind of tailored experience should they have? Again, developing other leaders isn't carbon copy. I'm not trying to recreate myself. I'm trying to draw the best them that God has placed in them. And maybe they wear armor, maybe they don't. Maybe they have a slingshot, maybe they don't. But to personalize it and say, God, where do you want to take this person? Where do you want to take this person in my family, my business? my life group, where do you want to take this person? And asking God for that specific plan. God has a specific plan for him. Um, and then number three, responsibility. Give them responsibility. 
Another thing we can pack in our bag is to give responsibility. What kind of responsibility do you give to those that you're developing? What kind of responsibility do you give to those that you're developing? Hold on to this question because we're going to come back to it um, in just a few moments when we go to breakout. But I, I want to do this. Um, number four is set goals. Number three is to give responsibility. And number four is to set goals. To set goals. Now, I am, I'm one of those kind of guys that, here, here's, where, here's where my thinking lands on goals. I have never set one New Year's resolution ever. For me, when I hear goals, I think process. Some people are really good at making goals. My mindset has always been, we actually had this discussion the other day, Dr. Dotes and I, we're having a discussion about process versus goals. And I'm a process person. I have, I have sort of goals in my mind. But I've never been that person that writes them out and goes, I'm going to hit this and this and this. To me, I guess if you want to say it's a goal every day, but the process to me um, is where I sort of land with it. And so I want to ask you, are you more a, hey, I'm going to set goals, I'm going to go after those goals, or are you more of like, I focus on the process of getting somewhere? Do I think more about the system every single day or do I think about the end target line? Would somebody be bold and raise your hand and say, you know what, I'm all about goals. Ms. Sharon? All about goals. I guess I've always been goal oriented yes. um, and I'll set a goal and I'll do what I need to do to achieve the goal. Yeah. I set personal goals and then I set goals for the company and I just, I'm, I'm, I'm a goal. I am goal oriented yeah. period. And I, I really, I, unfortunately, I know I, I do. I don't really think about the process because uh, even though there is a process, but I just start running the race. Yep. I don't even focus on the obstacles. I'm just focusing on the outcome because I don't want to think. And for me, I don't want to think about all the obstacles because if I think about the obstacles, that would take my focus off of the goal. Yeah. Because it's just like we're running this race. You know, we all want to go to heaven. We're we're living this life to live again. And if we think about all the trials and the tribulations that we have, sometimes you know you go here. Right. But if you focus on the end goal, okay, heaven is where I'm going to end up. Right. And I know I'm going to go through these things. I'm going to have some highs and some lows. But through it all, I've learned to trust in God. And I've learned, you know, and he helps us through those. So I, that's what I tell myself. Gotcha. So I like it. Okay. Okay. Anybody else want to share? If you, if you say, hey, man, I'm, I'm goals driven or I'm process driven. What, what is your bent? I think it's actually a little bit both. Okay. I, mean, I agree that being goal oriented so you know what outcome you want to achieve but in the same manner as the bible lays out for us this process of how to live a righteous life right and as long as no matter what may come about as long as we work that process and how to deal with the situations whether it's good things or bad things the end goal would take care of itself yes and and that's kind of how I, I would think about it. Okay. Okay. I'll use one particular one particular example in the Bible. Everybody knows Judas, who sold Jesus out, right? For 30 pieces of silver. He secured the bag in a completely wrong way. Right? So the question, and I think I think you nailed it. I think you nailed it. I think the question is righteous goal, righteous process. Good goal, good process. But which one matters more? Which one, which one matters more? The goal or the process? I would think the process. Okay. 
because I think um, you have to have a vision. You have to have things that you're focused on, things you got to wake up every day and get done and accomplish. Yep. Um, you got to pray on them. You got to speak them to life. You got to write them down and look at them. And I think there's a process to every single thing, which is to every goal. There's things you've got to get done to get there. Without a process, you you go nowhere. <laughs> okay, I'm with you. I'm with you. All right, last one, and then we're gonna go to we're gonna go to breakouts online, and then we'll continue the conversation here in the room. I think the the process is really important because that's where you're being sharpened. That's where you're growing. That's where you're developing good new strong habits. Right. And it's where you're identifying in life, you know, what's not happening to you, but what's happening for you. Like what's what's launching you to the next step that gets you to the ultimate goal. Love that. I saw your post today, by the way. <laughs> Life is not happening to you. It's happening for you. Love it. All right, here's what we're going to do for everybody online. You're going to go ahead and go to breakout rooms. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, if you would, just talk with each other, um, introduce yourselves, and then you're going to have discussion about class tonight. We're going we're gonna to finish with this thought. The homework for this week is how are you um, creating space to build relationship in order to develop other people? How are you creating space? How are you taking time? How are you going to lunch, dinner, phone calls, text messages, emails, whatever it may be? How are you creating space to build relationship in order to develop people, um, to pour into others? And we get that opportunity every single day. It's a choice. We talked about it in the very first class. It is a we pre-decide that we're gonna that we're gonna um, give to others. We pre-decide that we're gonna pour into others. So my question is, how are we doing that? And then at the end, you're going to pray together. So go ahead and go now to breakouts.